Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into this episode of the On Tap with Title Tap podcast. My name is Dean Kalora. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Title Tap. So we're going to take a little bit of a pivot. Uh, we normally talk about technology companies and what capabilities uh, they have that could be wow factors in your marketing. Uh, now we're going to kind of focus a little bit within and uh, dive a little bit into more culture, sales, and what all that could mean for marketing. And to help me do that, uh, I've uh, got none other than Dr. Cindy McGovern, uh, our first lady of sales. She's an authority in this space, as many of you all may know her already. Uh, and we're bringing in on this particular episode, so we're considering this like a three-legged stool, right? So we've, where we've got culture, sales, and marketing. The first leg here is going to be with a gentleman by the name of Kyle McDowell. Super, super stoked to have him on. Uh, he has been in leadership uh, roles and companies like CVS, uh, United Health Group. Uh, he's had a focus on culture building and kind of turning things around. And so he leaves just such an imprint whenever he speaks. Uh, he's got basically 10 principles. He just came out with a book called Begin With We. We're going to dive into some of those principles in this episode. And uh, Dr. Cindy and I are going to go and field some questions to hopefully tease out some things that you could take advantage of in uh, the minute you leave the uh, cast and put them into action. And then from there, we'll be building from that uh, in foundationally for sales and marketing uh, when we get to those episodes. So anyway, without further ado, I hope you enjoy this one. Uh, Kyle's awesome. And uh, can't wait for you guys to dive in. Thanks. All right. Hey guys, how are you? Good morning. Doing great. Good morning. Man, I uh, I am so excited right now. Um, so just a, a quick treat and we're going to just dive right in. So, uh, you know, we've talked about kind of why some of what we're about to dive into is so prevalent uh, to the times we're in and just how important it is for uh, folks in our audience and really abroad just to take action right now. There's There's just a lot of potential opportunity to really make stride. So I'm, I'm really, really excited. We're going to be diving in kind of a three-part, we're calling it the, the three-legged stool, so to speak, between culture, uh, sales, and marketing. And so I am going to, we're going to start with culture. And I've got on uh, Mr. Kyle McDowell here and co-hosted with me now for some interview action as Dr. Cindy McGovern, which many of you in our audience uh, are familiar with. So again, good morning to you both. Super excited about this. Um, so we've got, you know, we've agreed to kind of keep this as a sprint, right? We're, this series as a sprint. So we're going to kind of get into the meat of the matter, uh, spend about 20 minutes with our audience, and uh, we're going to kick this off uh, with you, Sir McDowell, uh, to talk a little bit about culture. And I know you've got um, some extreme passion for this, and uh, in your in your background speaks volumes. Uh, you've got a, a, a book coming out, uh, the Begin With We book, at, which is uh, phenomenal. Um, I'd like to maybe take just a minute to get our audience acquainted with you. Again, we, uh, as part of this cast, have an audience of attorneys and title agents uh, that are, uh, you know, kind of in the throes of a shifting market. Uh, so uh, really, I'm sure eager to kind of hear what you have to say. But if you could get just a, a little bit where you're calling in from, uh, and a little bit about your background, and then we can just dive right in. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, you bet, Dean. Uh, good morning. First of all, thanks for having me, Cindy. Great to see you as well. Um, so I, I'm fresh off of a 28-year career in corporate America, where um, the entirety of that of that time was spent running uh, fairly substantially large organizations, primarily in the healthcare space. Um, for example, uh, my, my most recent engagement, I spent some time at CVS Health, where I ran all of the pharmacy benefit management operations, which is a, um, a pretty massive organization, a couple of billion dollar budget, 15,000 employees. And prior to that, um, ran a big organization that was responsible for all the um, telephonic enrollment for the Affordable Care Act and 1-800-Medicare. So there's always been a service operation slant to my career. And um I, you know, Dean, to be completely candid with you, the latter maybe dozen or so years of my career, I just felt like there was something missing. I felt like uh, I had lost the passion and purpose that I carried so proudly when I first joined the workforce. And I just found myself becoming kind of more and more disenfranchised. Um, but I told myself if I ever had an opportunity to lead an organization that would give, give me the autonomy and flexibility to put my stamp on a culture, um, I was going to take that opportunity. And I found myself in that situation uh, about half a dozen years ago. 
And, um, and that is when I created the principles that we're going to spend some time discussing today. But I think if I were to give the bumper sticker on my career, it was a, a guy that just led with a lot of passion, really cared a lot about culture and team development and empowering those around you to be their best. And that's what's prompted me to kind of uh, reinvent myself and turn the, turn the page into a new chapter for the, the kind of the second half of my career. Awesome, man. That is, that is fantastic. Um, so I guess one of the questions I have, Cindy, I'm going to just kick this off, uh, is, of is, you know, why, why the book? Like, why now? Well, so um, I had an opportunity to step away from corporate America in late uh, 2020. And um, I, I did some real soul searching, Dean, and I, had a, I, I came to a conclusion that I was at a fork in the road. I can go back into corporate America in similar leadership positions and, um, and do my very best to lead another cultural transformation. And by the way, it's probably worth noting my entire career, there's a transformation slant. Uh, I was usually asked to take on organizations or functions that were underperforming, clean them up and get them in a, in a better place. So when I found myself at this crossroad, I thought I can go back into a similar role, you know, lead thousands of, uh, of, of teammates into something better that they, that they uh, probably weren't used to. Or I could take those same principles and try to have that uh, more ma have a more mass appeal, a, a, a broader effect, so I could affect you know hundreds of thousands instead of thousands, or potentially millions, by evangelizing these principles that I believe in so so firmly. Yeah, it makes complete sense. I can tell you right now, um, you know, I can't wait for you to dive into to the, some of the material because the audience you're speaking to obviously are focused on a on a services based business. People are everything. Their people are everything. And I think the uh, power of what culture could mean, uh, having a good one that's engaging and, and some of the principles that you talk about um, are going to be really, really well received and something that hopefully they can apply with. So that being said, you know, if you can kind of kick us off maybe into, I know there's, there, you've got like 10 principles and there's a, there's yeah. a few other things kind of, um, we could probably spend five hours on, but if we could condense this in, a, in, in several minutes, um, you know, kind of can walk us through sort of just diving in some of the meat there that, uh, that they can tangibly walk away with and put it to action. Yeah, yeah, you bet. So the book is called Begin With We, Begin With We. 10 Principles for Building and Sustaining a Culture of Excellence. And the, the premise of the book is if we, the collective we, the people behind the curtain running the operation, the people actually getting the work done, if we are a high functioning organization, a real team, not an organizational chart, it's impossible for us not to succeed externally. It's impossible. But I think a lot of companies come at it from the opposite direction. They usually approach, well, how do we wow the customer? And I think that's obviously very, very important, but you can't wow a customer or a prospective customer with toxicity behind the scenes. You can't mm -hmm. do it in a low function with a low functioning organization. So my premise, yep. was, my premise was um, when I had the opportunity to introduce these principles was if I can get this team at its highest and best functioning um, uh, level that it's, that it's ever been at, I am certain I can turn around the results. And um, the approach was, was very simple. I needed principles, guiding principles that were very clear and relatable to the employee on a day-to-day -day level. You know, this is not to be, these, these principles are not to be confused with uh, values or mission statements, which are, which are great and have their place. The principles speak to me on a daily basis and allow me to kind of bounce what I do up against these principles on a daily basis to make sure that what I'm doing is in line with what the team is doing. Because at the end of the day, I truly believe, Dean, there is no, there's nothing more powerful than a team aligning on principles that fuel the organization. And if we're aligned on those principles, and a principle, by the way, is nothing more than a foundational belief, something that we hold true. If we collectively hold these principles as our guiding, guiding principles, our rules of the road, we will achieve more collectively. It's one of those, you know, the, uh, what's the expression? Uh, the sum is greater than the, the total of the parts. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something like that. Um, so, so <laughs> there it. are 10, there are 10 principles that each principle begins with the word we, and in isolation, you might read one of these principles and say, well, yeah, of course we're going to do the right thing. That's we, number one, we do the right thing always, of course. But I think where the value is, is when they are in the collective uh, 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 10 principles together, and they expand upon one another to kind of round out the entire approach to how we're going to treat each other. And that's how I approach the principles in every organization is these rules 
are these principles govern how we treat each other first and then those we serve in that order. Um, so let's just jump into one, if, if I may, I'm kind of on a roll. Are you okay yeah, with that, Dean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the ones that I think is, is really probably lost in a lot of corporate America today is we take action. Uh, that's we number three. Uh, we take action is just uh, really, it's a focus on, it must be a focus on if you see something, do something. In other words, we've all been in that environment where, especially the bigger the corporations, we've been in that environment where we see something that's broken every single day, or we see a process that has an opportunity to be improved every single day. But there's a, there's a, there's a hesitancy to go into that, to take that action. And why? Because we've been taught over time that management has the answers or leadership will make that phone call to me to ask me to engage, to take action, to fix this, this issue. Um, and that's not a culture of excellence. And the goal here is to, to develop a culture of excellence. A culture of excellence means if I spot something that needs attention, I'm going to, I'm going to look into it. Uh, it may not be my domain, but somebody needs to know that this issue exists and we need to assign the right people to get it, you know, get it, uh, get it resolved. But I think over time, corporate America has lulled us into this theory that, you know, there's someone else always with these grand ideas in some ivory tower. Um, um, but uh, I think what's lost on most is uh, that that's where we come in. We should not wait uh, to, to, to take action. So, you know, that, that comes out of the gate for me as a strong one. Yeah, I can tell you, and Cindy, you probably experienced this too within your own organ. We both obviously run our own organizations here and, uh, you know, taking ownership of your own role is paramount for the, especially for the small to medium sized business, business that applies departmentally, I'm sure on the larger ones as well. Uh, but it's huge, you know, that one, and, and we follow another one, uh, which is like closing the loop, right? So don't leave anything hanging, you know, for the customer, we don't want them to ask where they're at in the transaction for a team member, we don't want to know if it was completed yet. So if you're holding the baton, make sure you close the loop to, to capture that next step. But uh, man, it's what you're saying is resonating, because we, we try to live some of some of those, they're different, you know, principles, but uh, along the same constructs, and you probably have the same kind of mechanisms. 100%. But one of the things, you know, I've gotten a little sneak peek at, at Kyle's upcoming book, which is amazing. And it's going to help so many organizations because of that. These are principles that you live, not just words on a board. And I think that's the biggest differentiator between like a core value and, and what's in your book. Is this is, I would actually say all of your principles are about taking action and how you live them every single day. And that becomes the culture of the organization. And it really is about empowering each individual to be their absolute best so we truly are stronger at the end of the day which is one of the things i love in your book well thank you hey and uh, dean you made a comment a moment ago i want to circle back to you said it's uh, about closing the loop you know that's a theme that you guys really try to focus on the preceding we to we take action is we say what we're going to do and then we do it so I there think there's, there's, a, there's some real similarities there. <laughs> there right? we go. But, but yeah. in isolation, you would see that and say, well, of course, we're going to do what we say right. we're going to do. But if it's, if it's a principle that we hold true and it's a foundational belief, there's an obligation to do so. Honestly, man, for us too, it kind of relieves a little bit of, of pressure and like uh, doubt in terms of, I'm just talking about the team mechanics, right? Because if we all are following these principles, we kind of know we, we stand in line and have each other's back based on these fundamentals. So there's a sense of confidence and just vibe that gets created that it kind of, it, it kind of makes you feel proud to be a part of it, you know, because you see how the customers respond to it. You see how your team members respond to it. You talked about toxicity earlier and I was like, yep, that's real talk because all this stuff, like it generates, it bubbles up positivity, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and it's so critical when we start talking about that, I think with some of the other legs of the stool, like to create what you're talking about with these, with these principles is, is just fundamental. Yeah. And I think, I think the beauty of them, um, of what I've learned over the years after having deployed them in uh, multiple organizations is it provides a cultural currency, if you will. And that currency has the same value, whether the new intern wants to use it or the CEO. We're all on the same playing field. I talk about a concept uh, in the book that I've coined the leadership gap. And that's where the leader sits here, the team sits here, and there's a kind of a, there's a disconnect in who's allowed to do what, but we expect this team to rally around this person's orders. It's not, it's not leading, it's orders. We expect that, but there's no, there's no yang to that yin, if you will. There's gotta be a balance. Um, but let me just respond to one other thing you said though, um, and that is around kind of the day-to-day -day piece. 
there's a we that's uh, sometimes tougher for some to grasp and embrace, and that's uh, we challenge each other, uh, which is a really important component of growth, right? But the the beauty of that we, and I'll, I won't go into the the you know the story behind that um, that we and, and why I've seen it be so so powerful. But I think what's most important is um, you, you talked about everyone being on the same page. There there wasn't a day. A day did not go by where I wouldn't hear someone say, hey, Cindy, um, we challenge each other, right? And what that, what that does on a human kind of perspective or level is Cindy is automatically disarmed. It, it sounds odd, but it's because I'm leaning against the principles that we've already agreed are our beliefs. So when I, when I premise a challenge, which in the past was probably perceived as a slight or being confrontational, but when I premise it by saying we challenge each other, right? She's she's already on the on the on the front of that question. She knows I'm coming from a good place. I'm coming from a place of good intention because it's our it's our belief. So uh, th 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 that's the common connection I think that comes from embracing these principles. It's funny Example. you say that because that's actually one of my favorite of your principles. Yeah, I think, is that right? I think that's one of the ones that creates an opportunity for everyone to be heard. And you know, in the media right now, we're hearing about quiet quitting and quiet firing. And it's because there's not an opportunity to speak up or people don't feel empowered that's to right. speak up. So that's what's happening. And it's wrecking culture and it's wrecking people's personal brands and quite frankly, probably wrecking some careers along the way. But by creating an opportunity where everyone can speak up and be heard in a respectful manner and know there's not going to be some sort of negative impact to right. Right. It really does create a stronger we because, it, you know, as a business consultant, we go into organizations and we help them grow. We have to hear from everybody. And some of the best ideas in an organization are from the people who wouldn't normally get a voice for. That's exactly right. Operations have ideas for sales. Sales has ideas for operations. We're all stronger for that. So that it's actually funny. That's literally one of my favorite principles. But I'd love to ask you. And I, I know how this works, Kyle, but I want to hear from you yeah. the impact that it has on an organization. So when they start living these 10 principles, truly living them, everybody is in agreement. This is our foundation. What's that impact down the road? What do they start to see? Well, I think um, it's, I love that question, by the way, because at the end of the day, you know, I can laud these principles, but having lived them um, and seen them in practice, is is where most of my beliefs and that uh, these principles are so important. Uh, that's that's where it's founded because I've seen it. This is not theoretical. And at the end of the day, you start to see a team versus an organizational chart. And by definition, the team has a genuine interest and they care to help one another. And if you're an environment in an environment where the team really cares about one another, it's impossible for that team not to succeed in its uh, kind of more macro goals. So, um, and how do, you, how do you observe that, right? I'll give two quick examples. Um, there, there becomes a shift from territorial success or what I might call silo success. And that is, so let's, you know, let's, let's pretend I have five direct reports, um, you know, three are performing very well, two are not performing well. Those three feel like we are performing well. The team is performing well, the company's performing well, but you know, that's not true. Right from my perspective, I have sixty percent uh, performing well, forty percent not. The transition once the we's become part of our cultural uh, DNA is those three now become more concerned about the, the other two, and they challenge the other two because they know that's allowed. They pick that they pick up those two leaders because that's another we we pick each other up, and there's a recognition that until those two are performing better, we are not performing where we need to be. Um, and I've seen that time and time again. And, and that also creates an environment, by the way, that um, allows for kind of redundancy. Um, you know, I, I look back at an organization where I led, I had seven direct reports. Um, one was, uh, one of my direct reports was of a very, very confident, um, capable uh, young woman who, who her, her, her sky is her limit. She can do anything she wants to do. At the time, she had about 200 employees in her, in her organization, but she always expressed an interest to do more. This environment, create, uh, these principles create an environment in which in my staff meetings where, you know, those were typically readouts in the past, uh, they became conversations. So the woman I'm referencing ultimately assumed the role of running the entire operation. She has 10,000 employees today. Wow. And had she not gotten that exposure, 
and the ability, and to, to, your, to use your word, Cindy, the empowerment to ask the questions, she never would have been given that opportunity. So you see a team that cares about being a team, they care about one another. There's a, you know, there's a really brief story in the book that, that says, well, there's a line in the book that says, uh, colleagues become friends, friends become family. As cliche and as corny as that might come across, it's absolutely true. That's the result you'll see. You know, there's something interesting about what you just said too, that people don't recognize that they're leaving a leadership legacy, even if the word leader or manager doesn't appear on their business card or their signature line. And that woman was empowered to start to create a leadership legacy and self self within the organization. Yes. And that's yes. one of the most fundamental pieces is, I think when people are empowered, the company is stronger. You know, the company may have a great brand. The law firm may have a great brand. But if that person recognizes what impact they can make as a singular person to the rest of the group who create this we, then all of a sudden the entire organization. Preach. Right. Preach. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed I, lo it. I, lo I love these principles, though. I'm, I'm a huge fan of this because it is one of those things where I think we don't recognize the impact of the legacy that we're leaving. And I think leaders, you know, going back to your gap, mm -hmm. I think they have to recognize they're a little bit of the lead domino to start bringing everyone in to That's have right. a conversation yes. about yes. collective we. Yes. Yeah. Incredible. Love this message. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I, I, I'm going to uh, try to keep us true to some time here, but I do have a few things that I want to just uh, kind of in-cap us with. What we're hearing, what I'm hearing both of you say, and uh, is that, hey, number one, we're, yes, is there uncertainty in the market? 100%. However, uh, are there things we can control? There sure is. And, you know, what Kyle is, is really sharing and what we're hearing kind of out of both uh, Cindy and myself is that, you know, these principles are something that, hey, we control, right? Like we can, we can be the starting point of that for our organization, you know, uh, you know, be fantastic if it was top down, it can start in middle management, it can start with whoever's dialing in here to be empowered with, let me live this out, let me propose this. And what I'm hearing some of those benefits, just, you know, it's a more positive vibe in, in, in my working environment. It's the ability to have ideas and create, uh, you know, opportunities within those ideas. You know, there's this concept of entrepreneurship inside the organization, coming up with strategies and things that are improvements, you know, to a process or opportunity recognition, but all that has to be fostered fundamentally with what you guys have both said and what Kyle's kind of laid out here with some framework with this trust that it's a safe place to do that, right? So incredibly important <clears throat> and I think foundational to uh, what we'll be kicking off in, in, in kind of part two to this uh, with, uh, with uh, Dr. Cindy on sales. But uh, before we sort of tail in, Kyle, um, one thing, if I had one thing to share with somebody uh, before they wrap up here that they can go take action on the minute they get done with us, what would that be? Lead by example, lead by example. And you are, because you already are, you are leading by example right now. And is it the example you want to, that you want to be remembered for? Think about that. Don't Love go it. through the motions. Think about that. Love it. How can, how can the audience get a hold of you? Very creative Kyle McDowell Inc. Uh, that is how you find me on all my social handles <laughs> and also Kyle McDowell Inc.com. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kyle, for, uh, for spending some time with us. Uh, Dr. Cindy, it's always a pleasure. Uh, thanks for joining us. All right, guys, until part two, uh, I'll catch you both in a, in a few. Uh, everyone in the audience, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, and uh, we'll be back at you soon with uh, some more great content. All right. Thanks, everybody.